Governor Dayton's budget proposal is called the Opportunity Agenda for a Better Minnesota. Joining me in the studio to talk about some of the governor's priorities is the Commissioner of Minnesota Management and Budget, Myron Franz. Welcome. Thank you. With the announcement of the budget surplus, you began by urging a cautious approach to lawmakers. Why? Well, it's a great question because it's kind of a tale of two cities. On the one hand, the economy is doing quite well. As you may have heard, Dr. Klimakitas talked about all the positive indicators. Jobs are growing, income is growing, uh, activity is increasing in terms of uh, consumer buying. So all the positive, all the economic indicators are positive. So there's moderate growth. So that's why we're in a situation where we have more resources than we thought. So instead of 1.4 billion, we have 1.65 billion. So that's the good news. Good structure, eight structural balances. Uh, forecast in a row. This is really a solid budget we have. Now, the problem is the uncertainty. I don't think I've ever heard such uncertainty concerns raised by Dr. Klumbakitis and the Council of Economic Advisors that meet before we give out the forecast. So there's these concerns about you know, federal, the federal government in terms of t whether there's going to be a tax bill or an infrastructure package or the Affordable Care Act. We heard something about that today. And also federal regulations, trade, trade issues. So there are a lot of uncertainties. So you take the in fact, we have more resources, which is good, and we're in a good situation, but what do we do going forward? How much caution do we need to have? With the surplus projected also then into the future, into future years, uh, I believe that the appetite for tax cuts will increase by the Republicans. I know the governor has some tax relief proposals, and what's going to be his appetite for compromise going forward? Well, you know, the governor's always talked about being willing to compromise, but in this particular case, the governor's proposed about $300 million worth of tax cuts and tax spending, local uh, aid to cities and counties and tax cuts, about $200 million in tax cuts, about $100 million in local aid. But remember, we were in this exact spot about in 1999 and 2000. We had surpluses. We gave some of that away, and then we decided to cut income taxes, and we did so in 1999 and 2000, and then the dot-com dot -com bubble burst in 2000, a recession, and then nine out of 11 years deficits following that. So we need to be careful. Tax cuts need to be targeted, both in terms of size, so that it doesn't bust the budget in the future, and who's going to benefit. And the governor's proposal, it's really about 450,000 families would benefit the child and dependent care credit would go up and also working family credits would go up. So it's really targeted for those people we think need it the most. Uh, tax cuts also, as you said, need to be balanced with spending priorities and transportation continues to be uh, up in the air how it will be funded. Uh, the governor has said he would like to increase the gas tax, maybe registration fees. Where is the governor right now on transportation funding? He still believes very, very strongly that we need a dedicated source of revenue for the long term, $6 billion over 10 years to fix our backlog and get us up to, up to speed, so to speak. So that's why he's still proposing the gas tax or registration tax increases. But remember, if, if we don't have a dedicated revenue source, then we have to take it out of the general fund. And I just mentioned about the tax cuts. If we want to fund the $6 billion problem over 10 years, we simply don't have that kind of money in the general fund. It'll, it'll crowd out education, health care, and other infrastructure issues. So that's why he hasn't really changed. And even though a lot of people don't think we need it at this point, there's just no other way, no other proposal to come up with new dedicated revenues just for our transportation and infrastructure. It's really important we do it soon. We've let it go by a couple of years now. Yes, and um, in terms of improving water quality, this has been something the governor's uh, really been passionate about. Uh, this is the year of water action. What does he propose to continue to enhance water quality in the state of Minnesota? Well, for, the primary area has been in his bonding bill. He has over almost $200 million worth of bonding projects that would help small cities with their water treatment plants. It would help uh, a lot of the infrastructure around the state. So his goal is to try to make sure that the water quality get get uh, distributed around the state in, a, in an equal way, which is really important to do because the rural areas have water quality issues and so does, the, so does the Twin Cities. So I think the key is infrastructure and building things that will help in the future maintain the, uh, the water quality, but also in his tax bill. He has some money to help pay for farmers who put money, uh, to put uh, acres aside for buffer areas. So he wants to be, be able to support that as well. So it's, it's really across the board and across the state. Uh, let's move to the health care landscape, which <clears throat> is uncertain based on federal policy. The governor has proposed a Minnesota 
uh, Minnesota Care buy-in option to help Minnesotans purchase health care. What's the rationale for that? Well, I think the idea is that the structure currently exists. So why build a new program or come up with a new way to do it when we already have the Minnesota Care uh, system that's already working and it can take in more people? One of the things that we were concerned about is for 2018. So you know, 2017, we passed the premium tax relief, which is great. That's a great sign that the House and the Senate and the governor were able to come together, the speaker, the majority leader, and the governor make a, an agreement on that. And we, that's underway now and being implemented. But the idea of the 2018 market, uh, there are some ideas about reinsurance in the market and doing some things along those lines. But clearly, one of the opportunities is to provide, to take a mechanism, a system we already have, Minnesota Care, and then just allow more people to participate in that is something I think we could do in this time frame. Is this going to be an expensive proposal? And, you know, we working on the cost of it. I don't think it'll be too expensive. We'll have to build some more infrastructure to allow the systems to take in more people and monitor the, their progress and whatever. So we're still working on how much it will cost. Uh, the governor is also a champion of early learning opportunities, and I assume there would be an expansion for the voluntary pre-kindergarten program. Um, but what are some other ways the governor hopes to expand educational opportunities in Minnesota? Well, in addition to the voluntary pre-K, it is these 2% uh, and 2% on the formula. So that's about $600 million more in the K-12 education in Minnesota. If you couple that with what he's, he's already done over the last five years, six years, It'll be over $2 billion in additional funding he's put in K-12, along with the legislature. So that, that's a key component. But also the University of Minnesota and Minnesota State U uh, University and Colleges. He wants to put over $100 million in both systems to help those systems continue to keep down tuition, but also to expand their opportunities for people. I think when you look at the overall educational opportunities, uh, it's really critical with our short tightening or short labor supply or tightening labor, labor market. We need every young person to succeed in the state, both in whether it's getting a college degree or getting a, a certification or a training program. We simply cannot afford not to have these people succeed. And so his tax and I'm sorry, his spending in the education area is really across the board, all the way from pre-K to education and colleges and universities. Commissioner Franz, we've run out of time, but okay. thank you for coming today. My pleasure. <laughs>